What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to today's edition of Free Tool Friday. My name is Tyler S. Clark, co-founder of Dream Firms, where we create generational wealth and impact for accounting professionals by systemizing how they attract, win, and retain the business of your dream clients. And to help you with that today, we got to go really to the basics. And what we're going to discuss is the do's and don'ts of dream client identification. More specifically, the seven don'ts and the three things you must do to be able to successfully identify your dream client. Because here's the thing, your dream clients, they deserve you to be proactive. Problem is, a lot of us have clients who don't really appreciate your proactive nature. And maybe it's because ultimately they're not your dream clients. And the only way we can get to your dream firm is by having a practice of people who appreciate what you do. So let's ultimately identify who that individual is so that you can uh, ultimately get paid your true worth. So first and foremost, let's do the don'ts because I have literally hundreds of coaching clients that I've worked with. And I see a lot of things come up during this conversation that I think could be easily avoidable if we just listed them out. So the first thing that I want to be clear that is a don't when it comes to identifying your dream client is mistake a service as your dream client or as your niche. So what, what typically can happen is someone will say, I really love doing tax planning, or I really love doing IRS tax resolution, or I really want to do CFO level services. And they go, so that's my dream client, or that's, that's my niche, that's my thing. And I go, that's awesome, right? Like, it's amazing that you have a desire to elevate to this higher level of service and be able to do it consistently, stay in your zone of genius, in other words. But we can't mistake a service as a niche. Just saying, I want to do tax planning, right, is not the same thing as I do tax planning specifically for and fill in the blank. And we'll get a little bit towards that later. Or I do CFO services specifically for fill in the blank. So again, I consider that a don't, don't mistake a service as a dream client or a niche. Second item is uh, don't choose in a, a field or a, a market that you have literally no experience in. I see a lot of people rushing headlong into buying expensive uh, cannabis training, expensive crypto training, and then they go, but I really don't have that much interest. It's just a gold rush. Someone described this to me as a modern day gold rush, and I'm trying to be out there getting it. But you know who made money during the gold rush? The people who sold the picks to the miners, right? <laughs> Few people made it real big. But this isn't, again, a, I don't look at this as, hey, just because someone's saying this is a tremendous opportunity, everyone come in here, we're all going to teach you the same exact thing, and then we're all going to have you go and do the same exact marketing tactics. That to me can be a little bit of a slippery slope. That's not to say if you become super passionate about it and you're like, I'm going to live and breathe blockchain for the rest of my life. I'm studying it. I'm inspired by it. Beautiful. Go for it. But don't just pick it simply because someone else is telling you that it's wide open with opportunity. It's got to speak to you. Don't let someone else sell you on a market just because, again, it might appear like there's a ton of opportunity in it. Third item that you should not do is pick what I like to refer to as a rich niche. There's an old saying, the riches are in the niches. For sure, I don't disagree with that. But that's not the same thing as saying, I'm going to go and pick this niche because they can afford my, I'm going to use the F word here, keep your children away, because they can afford my fees. Remember, we don't use the F word in this, in this place, okay? No, no. They can afford my investments, the price I'm looking to charge. A lot of ways to refer to it is that don't involve the F word. And so, my, again, like if you're saying, I want that, you end up going, well, I'm going to pick uh, doctors or lawyers or dentists. And those tend to be the three big ones when they're just like, I want to, I, I understand the importance of having a market, but I go and pick a market because they're, they're rich. They, they may have good money, but they also tend to be exceptionally busy. It's hard to get in front of a lot of these people. Not to say you can't do it. We have many people successfully targeting all three of these but don't pick it again just because they go, they have money. We want to have something that's tied more closely to you as an individual. Uh, fourth item here is uh, pick, picking uh, five unrelated niches that just don't make any sense. So I'll talk to some firms and they'll say, well, yeah, we've got our dream client identified. It's beautiful. What's, what's the primary market? And they go, well, it's not really a primary market. It's more of like, uh, we like to work with engineers, crypto, uh, breweries, uh, uh, and mechanics, 
and uh, uh, aviation companies or whatever. And I just go, okay, maybe like two of those are kind of related, but it sounds like we're really spidering out. Well, like, which one of these makes up the most of your practice space? Oh, we don't really have any, none of them really make up the most, or, you know, we only have like one in each. And I go, do any of these industries actually recognize that expertise? Is it, are we actively deploying resources? Well, no. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because we're too divided. We've got too many different things going on. And I understand why a lot of people do this. And maybe I'll do a specific training on how to make a powerful choice later on about when you've got two or three really good opportunities in terms of market selection, and you're just not sure which one's the best one. I'll, I'll do a training in the not so distant future if you guys are interested in that. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're having trouble picking between maybe two or three niches. Um, so again, the key here is like, don't pick five things and think that that's a good way of doing it because a divided house cannot stand and a divided marketing effort between five different market segments will not be as successful as it could be if we just had a bit of a better focus on what is the best opportunity between those uh, warring niches, we'll call them. Okay, and then we're at, uh, I think we're at number five now. And number five is uh, picking a shrinking market with razor thin margins. Now, this might be a difficult one for us to kind of conceptualize. We tend to look at the, the, the bright side for the most part, right? We try and look at the growth and the trajectory. But if you're end up selecting a niche, uh, let's just say you say, hey, come to me and say, hey, Tyler, I really like helping out Main Street, right? I wanna, I wanna make sure that the people who are opening up retail operations are doing really well. Okay, I want profitability. I like inventory management. Not a lot of people like that, but say that's my thing. Say cool. Um, you're super passionate about it. We can always find success in certain markets, but there's this thing called the retail apocalypse that's happening. I mean, it's not just like something I'm making up. There's plenty of articles out there where mega brands are shuttering their doors, and so then we look at that and we say, well, there might be some smarter, more nimble, smaller retail companies that you can find, but retail tends to have, again, razor thin margins. And it is a little bit of a shrinking market because of how much it's moving online. Now you can still have that expertise of inventory management and other things when you go and say, well, maybe e-com is where the market's growing, the profit margins are, are better, and I can still have that same impact, but just in a little bit of a different space. Some food for thought. Number six, okay, number six of don'ts for dream client attraction or identification, excuse me. Number six is don't go too specific, okay? Now, too specific to me is how you increase your risk. And risk to me, right, if you think of risk as like, you can say, I only work with restaurants. And I have many clients that do restaurant accounting and bookkeeping specifically very well, even through the pandemic. But part of what the pandemic revealed is certain industries can get pretty pretty uh, lopsided or, or, or can be just kind of kind of tough to work with when something like that happens. Now those things are largely outside of our control, but part of our uh, our responsibility as as firm owners is making sure that we go, okay, how can I diversify my risk if something were like this to continue to happen or happen again in the future? And we might look at that and say, well, maybe restaurants is a little too specific. Maybe not for some people, but we might say, if you recognize the risk there, you might say, okay, maybe I need to go a little bit broader into food service at large. And that could include more of like snack food companies and, and bars or uh, uh, breweries, right? So you've got this, uh, this wider appeal. You're still having incredible relevancy and specificity, but you're not necessarily opening yourself up to unnecessary risk. And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't necessarily move forward with actually pursuing their dream clients is that they go, well, what happens if I cut out too much of the pie? And there's a happy middle ground here where you can not feel like that's going to happen because it's not, um, but also not pigeonhole yourself. And well, I only work with restaurants who operate between, you know, nine and nine and nine, 24 seven. And uh, only serve liquor, my favorite liquor, like that's hyper niche. And that's obviously not going to work. I know that's an absurd example, but you get my point. Um, and finally, the seventh and most dangerous one, to be honest, the seventh and most dangerous don't of dream client identification is don't say small business and don't say rich people. This is the inverse of number six. Number six is too narrow. This is too broad. This is way too broad. So typically the way 
I will have people think about as we go, okay, most people are looking for business clients. You might be looking for high value net worth uh, individuals on more like tax or financial planning side. I get that tax planning side, that's fine. But most people tend to be looking for the business clients for the monthly recurring and all the things that come along with that, the growth trajectories of those business, the more value added advisory services for businesses. But then they go, well, I want to do small business. And I go, okay, maybe a little bit more. Can we get a little more detailed? And they may not have a niche in mind yet. And they go, well, I'd like to do, uh, I like services. I don't want to deal with inventory. It's like, okay, so we there's like the entire market. And then it's like, we cut it in almost like two of professional services and retail and products. And it's like, that's not, it's still way too broad, right? If I just said, I do professional services, I technically would be speaking to accounting professionals such as yourself, but I wouldn't necessarily be speaking directly to you, which means again, I'm not as relevant. I have to spend more time and more money to get you to pay attention to me and ultimately invest in our services. The same thing is true for you. If you go, I want to work with professional services as opposed to saying, I want to work with digital marketing consultants, or I want to work with uh, creative agencies, or I want to work with landscapers. I don't, you know, it doesn't really make much of a difference in terms of what we fill in the blank there, but you can see that if you don't have that and you're too broad, you don't really have your dream client identified because your dream client is not everybody. And your dream client isn't just rich people, to be perfectly honest. It's just, it's just not. Um, I know you want people who can afford what you're looking for, but there's a happy middle ground here of just rich people using that as a as your primary driver and all the people who are ascending, getting ready to become wealthier because they can lean into your services, keep more money in their pockets, save their time. And guess what they do with that time? They reinvest it back into their business. They grow as their business grows. They grow with you. Their investments in your services grow and everything gets a lot better. But it starts with don't be too broad, right? Don't be too broad. So those are, the, those are the seven. If I had to summarize them very quickly, don't mistake a service as a niche. Uh, choose, uh, don't choose a chase a field that you have no experience in that someone's trying to sell you on. Number three is uh, don't pick a rich niche that you just think they can afford what you have, even though, again, no connection to it. Number four is uh, don't pick five unrelated markets because a divided house cannot stand. Uh, don't pick, uh, number six is don't pick a shrinking market with razor thin uh, margins and uh, number seven slash eight, I think there might've actually been eight. Uh, don't go too specific or too broad, okay? Finally, now let's actually talk about what you should be doing. You now know what you don't wanna do, but let's get towards what you do wanna do. And there's three of these, okay? The do's are very simple. Reflect on your experiences. What have you successfully done in your career? There are, there are normally threads that will run throughout your life. And what I like to do is I like to just pull on these threads a little bit and see if they connect the dots. So I want you to reflect on your experiences in your life, the things you're really proud of, the the uh, certifications you've had, the jobs you've taken, the, the, the people you admire and find yourself listening to and paying attention to. And what, what are those experiences, right? This is personal to you. It's your dream client. It's not my dream client. And so when I say yours, it's always got to be reflective of your experiences. Now that might sound a bit esoteric, but it's extremely important for you to understand that no one can tell you who your dream client is. You have to find it on your own. And that requires meditation, thought, right? Reflection, okay? Second thing that I like to make sure people do during dream client identification is reflect on your best clients. Who are the people that really actually deserve your proactive nature? Who are those clients? What is it? that might be a unifying theme that runs through the top five clients. And what's funny about this is when I ask uh, clients who are going through this with me as part of our Create Your Dream Firm program, uh, what's fascinating is they'll do that and then they'll go, oh, wow, interesting. I didn't even realize that out of my top five clients, these three, right, are all connected into this industry. They go, oh, that's fascinating. And they might not even be the three biggest ones because sometimes that clouds our judgment. We go, but my biggest client is actually an, an architecture firm. And these three are in digital media services, right? But, but 
that architecture firm, I keep thinking architecture, architecture, because they're the biggest, but actually they're not even the most profitable. And again, this is just an example of what a conversation could look like when you're starting to go through meaningful exercises that give you clarity on this, right? The worst thing that can happen is you stay in purgatory of dream client selection. You never really actually end up making a whole lot of progress to getting those people towards you. So again, like let's take a look at your experiences. And the second thing is let's take a look at your existing client list. Now, for those of you who may not have a client list right now, it's okay, right? Just, you can skip over this or you can talk to your peers and say, well, what are maybe some of the clients that you've been working with? And what are some of the things that you found have been really, really um, good traits, factors? Um, what, what is it that you've picked up? Like lean into your network and, and use them as a way to maybe just kind of, again, like illuminate what the possibilities are for your specific dream client identification, even if you don't have clients yet. And finally, Finally, uh, third, but certainly not least, arguably the most important is reflect on your beliefs. Um, when anyone, someone, when anytime someone joins the Create Your Dream Firm program, the first thing I really kick off our relationship is, well, why does this all really matter to you? We get to a, a really deep level very quickly to drive you through the program and drive you to your dream firm. But this is your belief set, right? This is, this is what makes you, uh, what drives you and when you have a clear understanding of, again, the, the key reasons that, these, that this matters to you, why be an entrepreneur? Why help small businesses? Why do all of these things? Yeah, they have your expertise recognized, the, have money. But let's say all those things are true. What does that really do for you that you can't currently do right now? And when you start to establish this belief set, you get to a much more powerful reason for why people should be working with you in the first place. If you take a look at our website, the first thing on there is our, is our driving belief set. It's the thing that makes me want to help you, right? And it's creating generational wealth and impact. That to me is an incredibly powerful motivator. And it took a long time for me to distill it down into those words because I kept thinking about, I was like, why are we doing this? What's driving us? Why do our clients want to work with us? What's the recurring theme that comes up when they tell us why business growth matters to them? And time and time and time again, I'm listening to my dream clients because I'm actively targeting them. I'm actively speaking to them right now. And when you get the chance to speak with me, now I'm listening. I'm going, what are the central threads and themes that I can pull on and start to loop together, connect the dots to make all of this more powerful? And that why, what's driving us, what is your belief system? It could be related to the importance of helping, uh, uh, helping women to be able to, to, to recognize that you can be successful, right? Or whatever the case may be. It might be about helping minorities. It might be about anything. It, it's your belief system. It might be related to spirituality. There's so many things that you need to just put in writing. And this to me is uh, the major, like if you're going to take an implementation side of this away from it and actually move from just listening to acting, again, a major sign of one of our, our dream clients is people who don't just watch videos, but actually sit down and go, okay, there was actionable information here. How do I actually take it from up here to here and out into the market? Right now, you need to reflect on your dues, your don'ts, you can just say, I'm not going to do those things. But your do's, you have to do those things right now. Reflect on your best clients. Reflect on your life experiences and reflect on your belief system and see how things start to connect. Just pour your thoughts out on some paper. And I assure you, we'll do a lot more for dream client identification than just about anything else you could possibly hope to do. So with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed today's free tool Friday. And for those who are proactive about going and getting those dream clients who deserve your expertise and really appreciate what you uh, bring to the table, if you want to accelerate that process, check out the link down in the description or comment section down below that will allow you to book a call and learn ultimately about how the Create Your Dream Firm program can accelerate you to your goals. So again, thank you so much. Remember only you can create your dream firm, but we are proactive about helping you every single step of the way. I'll see you all next week, everyone, and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your weekend.